Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I am Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And so if you've been with us before, you probably know that the way we do that is by spending some time together digging into the Word of God, reading the Bible through together and studying it a little bit. And so every day we read one chapter from the Bible together and then we take a little snippet from a little portion of it and we dig into that a little bit deeper and we apply it to our lives. And then we spend a little time in prayer at the end. And so I thank you for being here. I'm glad you're with us. And uh, today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 5. We've just started working our way through the book of Acts, the story of the early Christian church. And so today we'll be reading Acts chapter 5. And so I hope that when we're done, you'll read the whole of that chapter. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to read the very end of, pretty good section, at the very end of the chapter. We're looking at verses 33 through 42. So if you have a Bible handy, I invite you to grab it. Or if you're watching on the computer, you can pull up your phone and join me in Acts chapter 5, beginning in verse 33. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All of his followers were dispersed and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census, and he led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and his followers were scattered. Therefore, in this present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to stop these men you will only find yourself fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Man, I love this story. When you read the whole chapter, you will see how powerfully God is moving in the early church. Now, if you've been kind of following along, you may recall from Friday last week that the disciples were ordered not to preach anymore. They'd already been arrested Uh, They were ordered not to talk about Jesus anymore, which they promptly ignored. So they get thrown into jail again. And you're going to read the story. God miraculously frees them. And by the next morning, they are right back at it, out in the temple court, preaching, proclaiming the good news of Jesus. They, They literally are right outside the meeting of the sand Hedron preaching in the streets, the very people who just arrested them. Man, talk about boldness. That's what they prayed for, right, on Friday. Love it. Absolutely love it. So they are brought back in before the Sanhedrin by the temple guards, and the Pharisees are so angry at this point that they want to kill them. Many of them are like, we're just going to kill these guys right here and now, right? Right? But one older, experienced Pharisee speaks words of wisdom to them. His name was Gamaliel. And he was actually the one who trained up the Apostle Paul as a Pharisee. He said something profound. In fact, I think it's something that's as true today as it was then. He said, let these men go. Because if this this is not of God, then over time it will fail. And it will fade away. But if it is of God, 
nothing can stop it. And we will be the ones on the wrong side of that equation, fighting against the Lord God Almighty. That, my friends, is a no win. This passage reminds us that we serve a mighty God. And if what we are doing in our lives truly aligns with God's will and his calling for our life, there is no stopping it. We may come up against roadblocks. There may be those who come against us, those who seek to silence us or deter us. But if we are bold, and if we persevere, and if it is of God, in the end, there will be no stopping us. You know, for centuries, people have tried to come against the work of Christ and his church. And even in our generation now, there are many who would seek to silence believers who would keep us from speaking of Jesus or raising up scripture or biblical values or a godly worldview. And there are those who would love to destroy the work of the Christian church. But I'm here to remind you that it has never happened and it never will. In the end, there is no stopping the work of Christ. And those who seek to do it will only find themselves battling against God. And so on those days when you're feeling discouraged, or on those days when it seems like all the world has come against you because you are trying to live a faithful life, a godly life, just remember to persevere because God is on your side and he will carry us through. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for these great stories from the early church where we see how the disciples spoke and behaved with such boldness, such courage, but not even of, of themselves, Lord. It, it was from the Holy Spirit. They literally prayed, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, fill us and give us boldness, and that's what you did. And so we ask the same for us, and we are encouraged to be reminded that if you are for us, who can be against us? And so, Lord, help us to continue to persevere in our faith and in our proclamation of you, even when it's hard, even when others come against us, knowing that in the end, you are always victorious. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.